what are the key shifts in the data analytics landscape? And why are these changes happening? And which data and analytics technologies you should keep an eye on the coming weeks? Matt Macau, Global Field CTO, Esmoral Software at HPE. And he's here to update us on all the latest trends and developments in the data analytics domain. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome. So the IT landscape of data analytics is changing. And what new trends and what changes do you see happening? Can you share your experience? Yeah, I think we're going through another phase of digital transformation. I think we all know that digital transformation has been occurring for quite some time now. And I think it's hitting the data and analytics landscape. Uh, there's been some massive trends and shifts uh, over the last few years. Uh, the industry really doubled down on the Hadoop and data lake concept, and that's sort of moving and shifting away. And so what we're seeing is as part of this digital transformation, organizations are now taking a very hard look at their traditional data sources, data streams, data processes, and, and data exploitation systems like analytics and data science. And so I think that's part of this macro trend that we see as part of digital transformation. The data estate is really what's in focus now. Yeah, and in the recent years, we've, we've seen this accelerated transformation to the cloud, uh, but also uh, data analytics applications. Um, and also what we see is significant increase in computing power. We see an increase in data loads in real-time analytics. And we see also on the other end, a huge pressure from the market to change rapidly. You have a great understanding of, of all these different areas. So what do you think are the key trends supporting this shift in data analytics domain? I think cloud has really set the pattern uh, or the principles that organizations are taking to go through this transformation. You did leave out one aspect that has been really updated and modernized over the last few years, and that's the network. The speed of the network, especially in the data center, has exploded, which has now allowed those cloud practices and principles, the, the first being separate compute from storage. That, that was native to how cloud applications were built. But in the data center and traditional systems, especially Hadoop, data locality, data gravity was really important to, to co-locate. But as you said, compute got a lot faster. And so what we found was that with these systems, the compute was outpacing the storage. And so the disks would fill up and the CPUs would be idle, but the networks weren't performant enough. Now that the networks are performant enough, we can now separate the compute from storage in these data intensive systems. And, and that was really the first step. And, and this happened really a few years ago, but now it's mainstream. Every large enterprise has updated their north, south, and east, west networks in their data center. Separating compute from storage across racks is not a problem because these networks are performant enough. And when you start doing that, then you start to be able to adopt other cloud practices and principles, such as containerization. That now allows me to get even more density for these workloads on those high performance compute boxes. And so I think those particular trends is what's really starting to shake up this, this data intensive landscape. Yeah, and you were talking already about this containerization. You're helping many organizations facilitate the shift. And what do you see as the key technologies that organizations are using to support this transformation? That's a tricky one because, again, containerization and really Kubernetes is the way to orchestrate containers uh, was born in the cloud native era. It, Kubernetes is an excellent platform for orchestrating those ephemeral microservices based workloads really wasn't designed for those bigger, heavier data intensive workloads. And so organizations have been adopting Kubernetes for their application development and modernization practices that again, fall into the digital transformation area. And now they're starting to push to try and do that in the data estate. How do I take those data intensive workloads and applications and also bring them into that cloud native approach using Kubernetes? And, and we're starting to see organizations hit a bit of a wall here. It's not as simple as just taking that application, deploying in a container and running in Kubernetes because you've got all that data you need to connect to. You, you probably don't want to put the data inside the container today. Maybe in the future, it'll make sense to do that. So how do we then solve for that? And, and this is where looking to the open source community, there's not a ton of answers. And we're starting to see other technologies emerge to help drive that transformation. But again, all eyes are on that cloud native practices, principles and technologies and bringing them to that data intensive landscape. Matt, very clear, very insightful trends. Thank you for, for sharing 
all these important trends and shifts in the data analytics domain. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, Matt.